Please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of Holy Communion today. Um, am I a bit too loud for some of you, or just right? <laughs> Yeah, if I start shouting, do let me know. Today we are looking at, um, not looking at, sorry. Today we are celebrating, to some extent, um, Fair Trade Fortnight and the work that goes into helping farmers around the world get what they deserve for the produce that they produce. And so we're going to hear a little about that in Sue's sermon today, and if that's an absolute shit is down, that's fine, because she didn't, um, <laughs> I'm sure I could throw something in. Um, and Margaret is at the back of church today with a wonderful table full of goods for us to enjoy afterwards, and there are some pamphlets in that for us to look over. So today we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's say together a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand, if you're able, for our first hymn. Ye servants of God. able to please remain standing for our confession we come to God as from one whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace and so we say together most merciful God father of our Lord Jesus Christ we confess that we have sinned in thought word and deed we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves in your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing the Gloria together. be seated to spend a moment in quiet prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear our first reading for the morning. The first reading is from Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10. <clears throat> a capable wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no luck of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. <clears throat> she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor, and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows. For all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. 
she supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you, Christine. The second reading is taken from James chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from from heaven from above but is earthly unspiritual devilish for where there is envy and selfish ambition there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind but the wisdom from above is first pure then peaceable gentle willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy and the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Elaine. Let's stand for our second hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
Gospel reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 30. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. (laughs) Over the last few weeks, I've been asked by two different people to preach on a couple of themes. One was said very tongue-in-cheek, and the other is a celebration. Both subjects, in my mind, fit in with today's reading from Proverbs. The idea of supporting farmers in poorer areas of the world to both produce and sell their goods at a fair price in competition with multinational food providers began 30 years ago. We are celebrating Fair Trade Fortnight, which ends this weekend. And the theme this year has been, Be the Change. 30 years of of directly supporting farmers and producers of goods that we eat on a daily basis. I'm sure most of us have bought fair trade bananas or fair trade chocolate. And we buy fair trade coffee here in Bulkington from the co-op for our coffee morning refreshments. Many of the fair trade farmers live and work in areas that are most affected by climate change. Their way of farming is helping to maintain tropical forests. By buying buying fair trade goods, we are helping local farmers to adapt and survive climate change. And international countries, in partnership with fair trade, are helping the farmers to protect large areas of land from deforestation, which would otherwise be lost along with the indigenous people and the natural world in which they live. The cocoa farms have been at the forefront of the challenge of climate change, as the areas where the cocoa plants are grown are having particular problems with plants not thriving through climate change. The organisations involved with producing cocoa are therefore helping the local farmers They're, they're focusing on protecting and restoring the forests planting new trees and restoring the balance of farming responsibly in order to prevent the further deforestation by taking up more land to to grow the cocoa plants. So that we can enjoy chocolate and many other foods that we take for granted. It also means that we can live in harmony with all the occupants of this lovely world that God has given us to care for. Our reading from Proverbs today is a poem written to describe the virtues and attitudes of a noble woman, which the passage tells us that like a valuable jewel, it is not easy to find. The reading is often known as the capable wife, who is God-fearing, strong in wisdom and grace, giving her very life to work for and protect her family. She makes money through her own enterprise to provide for her her husband and family, giving the money to the poor, her arms are strong and her hands are busy, 
and her husband is well pleased that he's got such a gem of a wife who is everything that he wants and does everything for him. As if this passage isn't enough, St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, says that as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be subject to everything to their husbands. These passages are often read in isolation and discussed as such, as was in the case when someone posted on Facebook a few months ago a copy of an article on wifely virtues which had been published in 1920 as a guide on how women should behave to please their husbands and keep them happy. Loosely based on the passages from Proverbs and Ephesians. So you can imagine the comments from both sides. Women in uproar and men agreeing with the article saying that women should do as the Bible says and submit to their men, albeit tongue in cheek. What a blessing then that Proverbs has already described wisdom as a woman. My reflection on the passage would be somewhat different from the writers of the Old Testament. I want to say that we should read it, like a lot of passages, with caution. We should put a warning message on it. Sentiments like this are so often used by society today to build up and then knock down prominent women and men. We hear of a loss of self-esteem and mental health problems because we are made to feel as if we are not good enough, doomed to failure. And unfortunately, this proverb passage could have an effect on some women, some women today if taken too seriously. It is thought that the passage is written by a mother giving instruction to her son on what to look for in a wife. I would have thought that giving a description like this, even in those days, a noble woman such as this would have been hard to find. Some men use the passage to celebrate their own wives and mothers as a tribute to them. But I think we should also consider the women who have been perhaps encouraged to follow this template of virtue and having built up a life for themselves and their family, find it taken from them by war, famine or disease. We think of the women who would love a husband and children to look after, but for one reason or another, it just doesn't happen. We think of women in other countries and societies who have to submit to their husbands, the women who cannot speak out loud in public, their voices never heard, the forgotten women of the world. But after all of that, I would like to suggest that this passage in general gives a positive profile to the, for the women in it. Celebrating those women who, even through adversity, managed to hold their families together, who worked like the farmers in fair trade, producing goods, taking a stand, being assertive and resilient without being aggressive, the women who changed society and helped others to live better lives. If we continue to read St Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 5, as he tells women to be subject to their husbands as to the Lord, he also tells husbands to love their wives as Christ also loved the, children, the church and gave himself up for her. What these readings show us is that we need to look at the bigger picture. Wisdom is a wonderful word. It helps us understand that although many of us feel, fall short of what society asks us to be, it doesn't mean that we are any less for it. God sees us for what we are and calls us to him in love. Let us ask daily for the grace to respect and love one another that helps us to build a world together that we all want to live in. Amen. to stand to declare our faith in God together. We 
believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried, and ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as Charles leads us in our prayers. God of wisdom and justice, we pray that you would be with those whose lives are beset by famine and disease. We give you thanks for the fair trade movement, and we ask that you would prosper with strength and dignity all those growers, farmers, and entrepreneurs that make the movement what it is. We pray that you would shape this world according to the values of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that you call us to be part of your church where the first are last and the last are first. We pray that we may love Christ and welcome him in the face of all that we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for St. James and St. Botolf, for the life of this parish. And we ask that you would bless, especially this week, all those who live and work on Mersey Road, Mild Tree Lane, and Mill Farm Park. As your son brought a child and put him in the midst of his disciples, we pray for our schools for St. James Academy and Arden Forest, asking that you would bless and prosper all the students, staff, and families who are part of those communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we ask that the restless would find their rest in you. For those beset by illness, we pray for your healing especially remembering this morning Paul Towers, Josie Bayliss, June Quinney, Sheila Pike, Carol Cross, Kerry, Gareth, Rachel G, Amanda, David, Bill Hackett, Lizzie Steele, Geraldine, Jean Adams, and Etta Pitchford. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray that in the restlessness of grief, you would bring comfort and solace to all those who walk the difficult journey of bereavement. We pray especially today for the family and friends of Pam Aldridge, Terry Lee, Jonathan Downs, Keith Pike, Roy Armitage, Mandy Jones, and Terry Strong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that in Jesus, you come among us as a woman giving her very life to protect her family. We pray that you would keep us always close to you and that you would send us to bear witness to your love that in wisdom we would be dependent on one another, that we would seek after understanding, that each day we would become more and more like your son. And so we pray together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. 
his dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we continue our service. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
welcome to receive communion this day. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, then please leave your hands by your sides. And if you would like to receive communion from your seat, then please just let one of our stewards know. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have arrived, but because you are still on a journey. Come because you love the Lord a little and want to love him more. Above all, come because he loves you and gave himself for you. If you're joining the service online with us this morning, you may like to say the prayer at the bottom of page 17.
Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Before we sing our final hymn today, we are going to receive some notices from Charles. Thanks, Rob, and uh, good morning, everybody. Morning. Um, if you can stay after the service uh, today, then it would be wonderful uh, to spend a bit more time together. But if you need any uh, further encouragement to stay behind, then there is, uh, as has already been mentioned, a wonderful fair trade uh, refreshment station to celebrate fair trade fortnight. Um, so please go and enjoy that and uh, find out a bit more about the produce on offer as well. Thank you so much to Margaret for uh, putting all those things together. Um, I will keep on the theme of food. Uh, on uh, Saturday the 19th of October, we're going to celebrate Harvest Festival, continue celebrating Harvest Festival with a fish and chip supper here and a quiz. Um, top prize to the people who'd spotted that I'd accidentally put Saturday the 18th of October. It's Saturday the 19th of October. I shall correct that for next week's newsletter. Um, if you could let Sue know, uh, as soon as you know, uh, if you're coming along, then that will just help us to get numbers for the fish and chips. Um, teams of four or more for the quiz. I was discussing uh, with someone this morning whether we're going to do a prize for the best team name for the quiz. Yeah. We could do that. That would be fun. Um, pardon? There's live music. There's food. It's free. Bring your own drinks. I mean, what is not... Pardon? No. But everything else is, so that's good. Um, so that's on the 19th of October, and then there's uh, details of how we're celebrating Harvest Festival here at, at St. James and at St. Bottles as well um, in the news sheet. So um, I will leave you to read that for yourselves. Um, on uh, Saturday, the 5th of October, is October's coffee morning, and the sign up sheet is at the back of church. Uh, so if you can volunteer uh, either your time or your baking skills or both, um, then please sign up at the back. Um, and Elizabeth has very generously agreed to kind of keep an eye on the sign-up sheet um, and keep an eye to make sure everybody's happy on the day. Um, so thank you, Elizabeth. I know that a few uh, people who usually help are going to be away on that day. So if you do have uh, the capacity to help out, then that would be really appreciated. I think just the last thing to say uh, this morning is that um, it's seashells on Tuesday, so if you can um, help with doing some of the setting up after church today, um, then uh, all hands on deck would be gratefully received. I shall um, commend the rest of the new sheet to your uh, prayer and attention, and uh, I shall hand back over to Rob. Shall we stand for our final hymn? Tell out my soul.
peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.